Okay, so this is the part of the tutorial that gets a lot more interesting. We're actually going to go ahead and allow our users uh, that have, have registered uh, to log in. Now, obviously, we haven't actually registered any users. We just have this users table uh, that we placed this data into, um, which was the username, the password. These are obviously the two um, important fields in this case and some other data that we're, we're going to be looking at later. Uh, this active field also relates to logging in because if a user has not activated their account, which we'll look at later um, by email, then they won't be allowed to log in. So we're going to perform a check as the user logs in to see if this value is zero. And if it's zero, we won't let them log in. If it's one, we'll go ahead and let them log in. So this is extremely uh, simple. Um, we're going to be using uh, functions that we're going to place inside of our uh, users.php functions file that we created uh, which is this one here remember that's uh, within our functions folder and it's called or included uh, with init.php which subsequently is included at the top of our pages here so we're obviously dealing with um, a widget I've already discussed that we're going to have our login form over here so the first thing we're going to do is build the aesthetics so we'll build the form that that the users can you know fill in and, and click submit and go somewhere so let's go ahead and do that now I'm going to go ahead and open uh, includes widgets and I'm going to uh, open this login um, widget here so what this is is it's a, uh, a widget that goes in the side and ev eventually we're going to have some kind of logic to say if the user's not logged in show this widget which is going to be the login form otherwise show the greeting so let's go ahead and just uh, modify this. I'm going to change the header slightly. Uh, I'm going to change this to login slash register. And obviously this can be anything, anything you want. Now within here we need a form. So let's go ahead and build the basis for our form. That's the action and the method. And we'll end the form there. So we've now got this form. The action, we're going to post this data to login.php and the method is going to be post data. Uh, so the, obviously there's differences between post and get data, but I won't go into that just now. Uh, if you haven't, you know, looked up post and get data already, it's a good idea that you do so. Okay, so I'm going to create an unordered list uh, to, um, to to display or structure the, the form, um, regardless of whether that's your preferred method, um, I'm going to be doing so. So um, I've created an unordered list, and I'm going to give this an ID of login oops of login and you'll notice that if we open up our style sheet which you might have downloaded you might be using your own styles uh, let's go all the way down and find login there so we've got login li link we've got a margin top of five pixels so that's just going to space that out slightly um, and also with or oh, let's see our widget Oh no, this is just going to display this is just going to display them top down. So you'll see that we've got um uh, we've got gem general styles for ULs here and, and everything like that. But anyway, you and obviously we've got our our resets at the top, so we've got our uh, our padding set to zero, our margins, our list style none. So essentially we we're, we're creating an unordered list which would by default have bullet points, but we're not actually showing them. So I'll just demonstrate this actually just by creating the um, list items. Um, now, how many list items we're going to have? Well, we're going to have uh, four, which might seem strange at first, but I'll go ahead and explain uh, what these are for. And I just realised I could have duplicated these, um, but never mind. My text editor allows me to duplicate lines. Um, okay, so um, the first one's going to be for the username field uh, and the label as well. Uh, although we're just going to write this as text and have a line break. The, the next one is password, and then we've got the submit button, and then we've got a link to allow the user to click through to register. We've already created the registration page, but there's there's not much on it. So username, uh, I'm just going to pull this down and indent so it looks a bit nicer. And I'm going to do a line break, and I'm going to create an input uh, field. The type is going to be text, the name is going to be username, and that's all I'm doing. So uh, within the second one we have password, 
and we're going to do exactly the same as here but we're going to have the type as password so we have our browser um, uh, cover up the, the characters as we type um, we then need a sign in button so or a submit button sorry so uh, we're going to have a input with a type of submit and we'll give this a value as well so I'm going to say login okay so let's go ahead and refresh and you see we've got now got our, our form it's, it's looking okay we can enter data and we can click login which goes through to login.php uh, at the moment that's not found because we haven't created that yet but that's going to be the next stage so within here we need to create this uh, link to uh, ask the user to register or, or you know give the option to, to register so that's going to link through to register.php so when I refresh uh, and I click this we go through to the register page and notice obviously this still stays the same because the use of our includes okay so we've actually finished this form now so I can go ahead and close that we, we don't need that up anymore um, the files that I'm going to be dealing with now if I um, I'm going to leave init.php open because we're going to deal with that uh, at some point we don't really need index.php open it's not really relevant we're going to be previewing in our browser but we're going to be working on the login.php file which we haven't created yet so let's go ahead and create a file uh, login.php this is in the root directory along with our normal files uh, and this is the file that processes the username and the password and goes off and calls different functions and says does this user exist or you know has this login been successful or is this user um, active so is their account active yet uh, all them kinds of things this this file is going to deal with so the one thing that we need to do is we need to think about error handling as well how are we going to handle the errors that that we pass through PHP and uh, you know say I, I, I don't enter anything in the form and I just click submit I want to be able to say to the user you need to enter a username and password uh, and we do this I'm going to create a, a variable at the top of init.php and this is just going to be a sort of global it's not going to be a global variable but it's going to be a, a variable that's going to be accessed uh, by every page and it's going to be in a, an array called errors and this might seem odd at first but it's just going to be my method of, of checking through errors and logging any errors we find so you'll, you'll know why I've done this in a moment when we get down to the nitty gritty uh, in login.php okay so um, we obviously need to access specific uh, functionality uh, within login.php and we need to access um, within our core directory our users functions now we're obviously not going to include our users functions file directly in here but we are going to go ahead and we're going to include core oops core forward slash init.php so we're including our core files so now when I go ahead and click uh, login we go through to this page nothing happens because we there's no content on here yet okay so um, uh, what do we need to do now well we need to go ahead and process this 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 login so um, let's just um, let's just go over to our our login widget um, just so we can see the names of the fields so we've got oh, I didn't change that one good thing I opened that up again so we've got a username with the name of username this is the name that we're going to use to access it within PHP and the same with password as well um, so within login.php what do we need to do well when we click we go through um, we need to say if something so we say if empty dollar underscore post is equal to false I'm using the triples, triple equals uh, operator, which is essentially checking for type as well. You don't need to do a triple equals, but I prefer to. Um, we're now going to define two variables, which are username, and that's going to equal something here, and password, and this is going to equal something here. And the two things that they equal are the posted values. So dollar underscore post username, and here dollar underscore post password so let's just go ahead and test this out I'm gonna go and echo username and then I'll just echo it I'll, I'll pop a space on there and I'll do password so let's go back to uh, our page and I'm gonna type in Alex and password log in and you see we've got Alex and then password or password okay so we know that that's now transferring the data that we type in this form 
uh, and, and, and we're able to pick it up within this file. Obviously, we don't want to echo this data out to the user. We want to start checking things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check whether the username or the password is empty, i.e. if they haven't typed anything in either of the fields, because we require both fields. So I'm going to say if, uh, and inside of here I'm going to say empty. So we're checking if empty, oh, if the username is empty, or empty password. Uh, and we can always use a, a comparison here. We can say equals 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 true. It, you know, it's entirely preference. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so what happens if the username and password is true? Well, we need to log an error somehow. So I'm going to append a value or append an element onto this errors array that I created up here. Okay, so if you're unsure how uh, arrays work, you may be coming from another language, in which case you probably will do if you've looked at arrays. Um, in PHP, they're relatively straightforward. So we would just say errors and then these two brackets, and we're basically saying now append on this value here. So um, if the username or password is empty, the error will now contain this value here. Uh, but we don't want it to just say value, we want it to display the error. So you need to enter a username uh, and password. That's relatively straightforward. Now, we're not actually going to display any data out here because we need to create some kind of function to output our errors. So. All this is actually doing is it's storing uh, these line after line of errors within this errors array. And the reason we do this is because we may have four or five errors or, or you know, two or three errors um, or 10 or 15 errors. So we want to display them out in, in an order to the user. So that's not it. We need to say else if something. So if the username or password isn't um, it is there, it, or it, it does exist, we want to go ahead and check if the user exists because if the user doesn't exist there's no point even bothering to go ahead and try and log them in. So we're going to use the user exists function which we need to create ourselves so uh, it's not a built-in function. Now if this equals false um, then we need to log an error Okay, uh, but we also need to pass a parameter in here. So I, I'm I'm sort of jumping the gun a bit. I'm I'm passing things in when I haven't even created the function yet. But it's a relatively straightforward function. It will just it will just count in our database if our user exists. So we'll, we'll create a query in a moment, and we'll we'll sort of display uh, you know feedback some information here. So um, we're going to pass through the username, and that's basically going to check whether this user exists or not. So if the user doesn't exist, we need to uh, again append an element onto this errors array. Um, and I'm just going to say we can't escape that character. Find that username. Um, let's just say have you registered. Okay, so now we're at the point where we really we can't really test the page because this function here does not exist. So we need to jump over to our users.php file and, and, and create this function. So let's go ahead and outline the function. Again, if you haven't de uh, dealt with functions before, it's a good idea that you do so. Um, so the function is going to be called user exists. And we need to define what we want to pass through here, and that's the username. So we can just go ahead and say username. Now within this function, we need to return true or false based on whether the user does exist or not. So we need to create a query. And that's going to be equal to the MySQL query function, which is going to uh, send a query string to our MySQL database and, and return some data. So in this case, I'm going to say select count. So I'm counting a specific field. Now we're selecting from the users table. Let's just jump back over to our, our database table here. Um, we're counting the user ID. So we're just picking the index to count really uh, user ID. And we're counting from users so we're counting from the table users here um, remember these are back ticks but when we use string data we use single quotes so you'll see in a minute how this changes slightly so we're selecting count basically the count from users where the username is equal to single quotes not back ticks and then in here we just replace the variable so username okay so we've passed through a username and we have 
uh, it basically injected this into the string. Now there is one problem here, and th this is security. Now um, I'm not going to go too much into SQL injection, but as this stands, it's relatively insecure because um, this value here can be passed through to make it seem uh, as if um, the queries well, it, it can essentially modify the structure of the query. Uh, and again, we have videos on that, so uh, so you know that's a good thing to watch. But um, I'm going to uh, uh, create a, a general function to sanitize data, um, and this will this will just um, you know this will just escape any characters that aren't meant to be passed to a query string. Uh, so this function that we're going to create is going to sanitize the data. Um, I'm going to leave this video part as it is for now, uh, and we'll go ahead and and do this in the second part of this same video chunk so uh, I'll join you in that part or join me in that part for for doing that